it's it's hard to uh, uh, underemphasize, you know, that my uh, relationship with my kids and my wife is a defining moment. I mean, I, um, you know, they, they absolutely mean more to me than anything. So that's that's uh, something that I, I uh, has has had, you know, an endless impact on on my life. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's a it's a hard thing to juggle, kind of like being involved in your family and your work and, and all these things. So I, I think uh, at times um, it, it's something to try to balance and all that. But I mean, at the end of the day, my uh, family means more to me than anything. So that, that's been my, uh, how, how I think about things and prior to important for women to be entrepreneurs for a variety of reasons. First of all, there's all this, you know, stuff that there's not enough women in, corporate offices at the top level. There's not enough CEO women. There's not enough women on boards at, in publicly traded companies. There's not enough women in tech, right? Yeah. If you fund women entrepreneurs, say I fund 100 women entrepreneurs, right? Now there's 100 women CEOs, right? So you can change that, number one. And number two is women have children, right? They choose not to or they choose to, whatever. They are the only ones that can have children. Right. Fact. And although certainly every generation, there's more of a partnership in the last couple generations. Right. You know, from picking up the groceries to, you know, changing the diapers to whatever it may be. At the end of the day, you know, women are, um, you know, women speak in terms of we men speak in terms of I. There is this, you know, a nurturing thing about women that's just innate, right? Yeah. And so if you can be a women entrepreneur at any level, right, I think that it's empowering for your children, particularly your daughters, to see that you can really figure out how to balance your life. And if you run the company, you run the show, right? If you got to go home, if you got to go to a basketball game, if you're going to take two weeks vacation and you need to do something and be home with your kid, you know, no one's telling you, you can't do that because you only have two weeks vacation or, you know, you know. I think risk is too overrated and uh, safety and protecting the future is too overrated. Like putting your bets too much on what will happen next is too overrated. I think it's very, very important to kind of just enjoy the moment and live in the present moment. And so if you feel a real urge to kind of do something, whether it be a small hobby project or whether it be a trip somewhere or whether it be starting a company as well. I don't think people should wait too much. They should just take the plunge and not uh, think about how to, what will happen if this doesn't work out, does, that doesn't work out, right? Because life is at the end of the day just about the experiences and each experience actually makes you richer and richer, right? And that is so much more important. Simple message is try to spend as much of your time as possible on things that you're intensely passionate about. There's no, there's no way to spend 100% of your time on it because there's always stuff that gets in the way. There's always things you got to deal with. There's always just an overhead of life. There's always projects that somehow you get involved in that you're not that excited about. Yeah. Work as hard as you can to spend all of your time on things that you're incredibly passionate about. Don't waste any of your life because it's over before we know it. And if you want to be a leader, you want to be a great entrepreneur, you want to just have a happy life, spend time doing stuff, being with people that you want. And recognize that failure is part of that, ups and downs are part of that, sickness, death, uh, unhappiness, strife. That's all just part of life. And so try to stack the deck in your favor by <laughs> spending time on things that you really care about. That's my One point. of my favorite things to keep in mind is um, you're never too good for any opportunity. And... That was a really helpful thing in the earlier days. It allowed um, allowed me to really uh, get my foot in the door um, with various things, and just always understand. You read a lot of advice about how to um, make smarter decisions and how to optimize some of the things that you want to do, and um, people put a lot of um, emphasis around how valuable your time is. How, how, how valuable an entrepreneur's time is, so you want to be able to make smart decisions and um, outsource as much as you can. And I think that a lot of that is true, but um, an important thing for me to keep in mind is to never let that, to never let that 
cloud your judgment on taking opportunities. And anything that comes up that you think could lead to something new, um, to take that. But, um, but I, I, I feel like it's my job as CEO uh, to make sure that we've always got cash in the bank, that we're always headed in the right direction, and that we're not um, stuck on the wrong trajectory. Because I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned from that is the concept of trajectory. And I've been meaning to blog on this for a while, but, you know, it's like uh, the, the, the most important thing you can do, right, in a startup is to accurately assess the trajectory that you are on. Yeah. Because if you get the trajectory wrong, um, you know, a startup is like trying to leap over a huge chasm. And yeah. if you get the trajectory wrong, you will hit the side of the canyon, canyon wall on the other side, right? And <laughs> yeah. people just bounce off the side of the chasm and fall to the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and, and, and typically they don't, they don't allow parachutes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> youngsters, I mean... I am struck by how many young people, like in, like you in their early 20s, are so damn serious about everything. I mean, they are. They feel like somehow they're behind in life at age 23. Like, how can you be behind? They're like, no, I've got to take my GMAT and this test, and i got to get to this graduate school. And, and, you know, if you look at, you know, the, the great people, uh, Einstein and others, um, they, they were terrible at school. Uh, they were terrible students, and they would goof off or do what appeared to be goofing off. So I guess my best message, if you want to call it that, is just like don't take things so seriously because if you lose that sense of playfulness, you know, of, of life being an activity of play and of fun, uh, what the Thai is called saduk, right? If you lose that, you've lost everything because – as long as work feels like work, you're probably not going to do anything great. Uh, when it, it is play, then it's not a burden. It takes on a lightness to it. So just chill the out. The biggest learning is that if you that money is a bad product of a good product. You have to focus on doing a good product first. And then money will come. If you focus on money, you will just not have money. <laughs> so... Uh, so we were convinced that somehow there would be a way to uh, to get some money out of a good product and a good service. So our focus was really on making the best product for the activity we had. So many businesses, not only hotels and um, guest houses, B and B, but restaurants and you know what, across the board, people just don't seem to do customer services right. Even as far as just the smile means so much to somebody when you walk into a place or you walk into a shop. You know, if somebody smiles at you, that instantly makes you feel welcome and, and you want to continue doing what you're doing, you know, wherever you are. And I, and I just think that uh, people should be sincere to themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, when they do something, they should do it because they like it or, or they love it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to study something yeah. for your BA, uh, it would be better if you know what you want mm -hmm. what you want to to study mm -hmm. what you want to be uh, to do for your um, living of course this is not a like a cast in, in stone you can always change because yes. um, you will grow up every day you should grow up every day yeah, right yeah. but at least you the, the better you you find out what your passion is uh, I'll say that uh, if you're really interested in it you shouldn't worry about what other people say. You should be true to yourself and uh, you should gain the strength. And it took me a very long time to realize that. And uh, uh, I know it is very hard because I'm, I've been through that. So if you're really passionate about it, you should just be at it and continue to be at it at whatever cost. Mm -hmm. You know, even, uh, even a minimum of 10 minutes you want to spend with it, spend every day. Mm -hmm. And that way you... Uh, the best result yeah. and when you feel that reward you know in any way in any, the smallest way possible that will really you, you might peak at the age of 35 are you going to stop at that age or are you going to have another dream can you dream at the age of 60 for a new career can yeah. you dream at the age of 70 for a new career think that you're going to live for 100 years or 120 years yeah. and, and, and feel that I need that energy therefore spend on your health 
uh, spent on the right people. Um, you need the right connect in your life. Um, you come out of good schools and good colleges. Uh, the connect is very important. And uh, every day in your life, ask yourself, have I helped three people today? And if you can help the three people every day, I hear, I hear even from psychiatrists that you would be the most positive person. That is, I think, one of the important things which I learned in a very hard way. So, so in my early days, I used to not fire all the people, like, because they are mis make mistakes or something. But anybody is bound to make mistakes. So, we have to be little patient with them and, you know, teach them how, why it happened and how it could be done. Take them with you, make them understand how difficult to get a job. And mm -hmm. So keep talking to them, so make them understand the company now. So make them understand that unless the company grows, you can't grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's more important. So take them in your conversation, in your uh, growth in your business. Take your people also around you to talk to them. So that Keep on going, never give up, stay away from negative people, negative words and uh, come with positive people. You know why not? Because to me myself, uh, I have people around with negative thoughts. They will tell you you can't do this. Can't. Yes, I believe like you students, uh, maybe you want to do something right. So maybe uh, teachers around uh, or maybe friends around say, I cannot do it. But you want to do Yeah. Go and do it. Never said, uh, okay, because of fences that you can't, but you say, okay, I just forget it. No, you can do it. It's your dream, it's your wish. You make it happen. Nobody out there going to do it for you, no? Just, just keep on going. Every time... Yeah, I would say don't let the negativity in. There, is, there are a lot of people who will tell you that you can't do things or that you shouldn't do that or, um, you know, you need, you need to focus on what's important. And, you know, generally what's important that's probably what's important to them, not necessarily for you. So I think it's just um, do what you think's right. Don't let anyone um, try and put a downer on it. You should never stop learning. I think that's really, really important. So I think that you, if you become complacent, then you're no longer... Uh, even if you're, you're considered a master, a master is essentially still a student because they're always still learning. So I think that's, that's very important to never stop, even when you think you've absorbed everything there is to know. I think there is always other avenues.